quality affects us all. We all breathe. It's clear to anyone living in the valley that the quality of, air, of our air is getting progressively worse. The goal of tonight's Clean Air Forum is to hear the candidates' views on concerns such as the health implications, traffic issues, effects on children and the elderly, renewable energy opportunities, and all the critical challenges to our air quality, as well as their ideas for improvement in the context of their role on the City Council. Uh, we like to blame Kennecott, we like to blame the oil refineries, we like to blame our neighbor's SUV, uh, we like to blame the governor, and perhaps he deserves some blame. Um, but it all comes down to us as individuals. And most of us would like to make better decisions, but we have to have some good alternatives, particularly in the area of public transport. Uh, UTA is to be congratulated for the great job it's done on light rail, and they, they really have done a good job with that, but it's sacrificed local bus service. I know in the avenues, bus service is actually worse than it was a couple of years ago. And I realize they all come, this bus service comes at cost. To expand bus service is going to be significant, be a significant expense. And I would support a sales tax increase to UTA if they would expand service and hopefully lower fares as well. I realize tax is a dirty word around here, but it's not as dirty as our air in January. This is my favorite subject. I have to agree with the others, getting outside and having our kids, you know, exposed to the wonderful, amazing place that we live in is a great, you know, shove to get interested in what's actually happening out there. Um, and Rachel Carlson, Carson also, that was one of my starting, uh, but then I read Sondra Steingraber's Living Downstream, and if you haven't read that one, you should check it out. And that led me to studying Superfund sites in central Utah um, and started kind of my fascination with a community and our environmental problems and how we either choose to stick our heads in the sand about it or do something and what our relationship there is and how it either uh, helps us change or slowly eats away at our health or rather quickly. So the Turner Key Beidle free signs that Sherm was referring to, um, you might recognize that's a state program. We need more money to print more signs if anyone's listening who can help us with that. But Breathe Utah and I, we looked at that program which was designed to go into schools and we said, well, we need a program. So I designed a program called Air Aware, which I've been taking into schools K through 12 for several years now. We taught almost 2,000 kids just last week with this Air Aware program. We do it year round. Contact us if you'd like it at your school. But we look at air quality through science. Um, we look at what is the pollution, what's the difference between summertime and, and wintertime, how does it affect your health, how is it different for kids than it is for adults because it is, um, what are our sources of pollution, and then what can we do, what can kids do to help you know, protect their health and reduce pollution because there's a lot of things. It's not just turning our keys off and being idle free. So we take that out to schools. It's something I'm really excited about. Another collaboration that I'm working on is with the Utah Society for Environmental Education. We're creating a Utah-based curriculum, which we don't have which is for K through 12. It'll provide about 10 lesson plans that talks about air quality from a Utah perspective and takes into account things like our geography and our thermal inversions and our point source polluters and things like that. So that is gonna be statewide um, at the end of this year. And we're gonna be teaching workshops coming up this fall. I think the Salt Lake City schools have done an exceptional job at getting students out of the classroom and out into the environment. One great example in my district is Hidden Hollow. It exists because of school children, and they did a wonderful job of doing that, and kids go there on field trips, and they see it all the time. I know just yesterday, kids in my neighborhood at Dilworth Elementary, fifth grade, went to Secret Lake, and it was on a science field trip. Yeah. But I think we need to do those kinds of things. But I, I think starting in kindergarten, having kids get out there, and I think the school, our Salt Lake schools have done really a great job, and our teachers of recognizing kids need to get out there and experience it. And I, I want to find ways that we can continue to support those efforts. Um, but I do think the city has a, a, a really significant responsibility um, to communicate the concerns of residents because um, nobody does that better than local government. And uh, one of the roles the city can play with Stericycle, with the UTA, with um, uh, the refineries, um, with the governor, 
is to be really clear that um, we represent the residents of this um, area, this region, this community, and this is how our residents feel. Because I think so often, especially as you get in higher levels of government, uh, officials seem to be really connected, or disconnected rather, from what um, the community desires and what the community is willing to put up with and not willing to put up with. I think it's absolutely critical that uh, violators of air quality regulations um, see enforcement. Um, that's a critical component of that regulation and frankly um, the state um, is performing very poorly if we don't enforce our minimum um, air quality requirements. It is a fact that Salt Lake City does not have enforcement authority over Stericycle, but um, Salt Lake City can speak with a very loud and uniform a uniform voice, particularly Salt Lake City Council, communicating residents' concerns about that um, and use every means possible uh, to communicate that to state legislators and the governor and that sort of thing. It, it will have an effect, uh, not as quickly and as effectively as you would like, but it, it will. I actually grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I watched um, U.S. Steel fight tooth and nail to not comply with uh, pollution control regulations. And basically what they were doing was trying to run the clock out, um, basically use up the capital facilities uh, and to get every last economic benefit out of them. Um, and when they finally stopped using them, it was because they'd worn everything out. And um, um, I would hate to see Stericycle turn into that type of situation. I mean, it needs, it's just not an appropriate um, thing to be using in this valley or doing in this valley, particularly if you look at the situation, their other facilities have actually been upgraded to much more uh, efficient and less uh, polluting facilities than the one in Salt Lake City. And I'm sure that's one of the reasons why is where those other facilities are located. Um, it was made very clear to them that they needed to do something about it. And we need to speak with a very clear and loud voice here that we that's what we expect here. Aaron. As Stan iterated, there is, um, it's disappointing that the city council doesn't hear about uh, the expansion of refineries in our boundaries. Um, and I think that this is not uncommon. We see a silo effect uh, throughout, you know, different levels of bureaucracy and departments from state down to municipal levels. Um, and I do have a good relationship, a working relationship with the Division of Air Quality and, and many people over there. Um, and so I can't help but I realize that the council doesn't have uh, any jurisdiction over Stericycle and what's happening there, but I personally couldn't help uh, but thinking about talking to the folks out there that I know, um, talking to the monitoring division and seeing what kind of capacity they may have to put a monitor out there at the elementary school. Um, in this coming inversion season, Breathe Utah, we've uh, arranged with the Division of Air Quality to put four different PM 2.5 monitors at ele various elementary schools around the valley. Data is something that helps us. It's something we can use more of, and certainly that would help that Foxborough community around Stericycle if something like that were even a possibility. I did go to the uh, town hall meeting at Foxborough Elementary last Saturday, and it is... Um, it's very saddening to hear about the health implications that these folks just like you and me are experiencing from uh, parents to the children and so on. So it's a very real problem. I also learned at that meeting that um, they project that it's about a five mile radius. So as we heard, I think it was Kevin Park said that his family is a five mile bird, you know, as the crow flies from Stericycle. That is absolutely within Salt Lake City's boundaries and something that is affecting our residents and something that the council can and should speak in a unified voice again. While we have no jurisdiction over Stericycle, I think w one thing that the governor and the legislature listens to is economic development. And if we can keep hammering home the message that bad air equals bad economic development, and if we don't enforce 
the law with people like Stericycle, other companies won't want to be here unless they're wanting to break the law, which we certainly don't want. But, but companies that we want to have that are clean companies coming in, if they, if they know we really don't care, it's, it will hurt economically. And I think if we can help drive home that message to the governor and the legislature, we can get them to act and to say, enforce the law. This needs to happen. And bad air does not know boundaries. It, it won't stay just in that area. Of course, it will go other places. We need to speak with a unified and firm voice and make it clear that, that we expect something to be done and that it's wrong to ignore it.